Hello, welcome back to the Mark Chenard Show, your home for hacking news and education. In this video, I'm going to cover hackers abusing Google Ads to spread malware into legit software. Okay, so malware operators have been increasingly abusing the Google Ads platform to spread malware to unsuspecting users searching for popular software products. Among the products impersonated in these campaigns included Grammarly, MSI, Afterburner, Slack, Dashlane, Malwarebytes, Audacity. These hackers have the audacity. Damn! <laughs> Torrent, OBS, Ring, AnyDesk, uh, LibreOffice, TeamViewer, Thunderbird, and Brave. Threat actors cloned official websites of projects and distributed Trojanized versions of the software when users click the download button. That's weird. Some of the malware delivered to victim systems this way included variants of Raccoon Stealer, a custom version of the Vidar Stealer, and the Iced ID malware loader. A bleeping computer has recently reported on such campaigns, helping to reveal a massive typo squatting campaign that used over 200 domains impersonating software projects. Another example is a campaign using fake MSI afterburner portals to infect users with the red line stealer. However, one missing detail was how users were exposed to these websites, which is a piece of information that has now become known. No way. Two reports from Guardio Labs and Trend Micro explain that these malicious websites are promoted to a broader audience via Google ad campaigns. This is when we get into the meat right here, right? Google ads abuse. The Google ads platform help advertisers promote pages on Google search, placing them high in the list of results as advertisements, often above the official website of the project. That means that users looking for legitimate software on a browser without an active ad blocker will see promotion first and are likely to click on it because it looks very similar to the actual search itself. If Google, if Google detects that the landing page site is malicious, the campaign is blocked and the ads are removed. So threat actors need to employ a trick in that step to bypass Google's automated checks. According to Guardio and Trend Micro, the trick is to take the victims clicking on the ad to an irrelevant but benign site created by the threat actor and then redirect them to a malicious site impersonating the software project. Okay, so now that we've gone into that, here is the most important part of the video, how to avoid harmful downloads. Promoted search results can be tricky as they carry all the signs of legitimacy. The FBI has recently issued a warning about this type of ad campaign, urging internet users to be very cautious. One good way to block these campaigns is to active uh, is to activate an ad blocker on your web browser, which alerts, okay, which alerts and filters out promoted results from Google search. Another precaution would be to scroll down until you see the official domain of the software project you are looking for. If unsure, the official domain is listed on the software's Wikipedia page. If you visit the website of a particular software project frequently to source updates, it's better to bookmark the URL and use that for direct access. A common sign that the installer you're about to download might be malicious is an abnormal file size. Another, cle another clear giveaway of foul play is the domain of the download site, which may resemble the official one, but has swapped char characters in the same name or a single wrong letter known as typo squatting. Bro, what are you talking about, man? Typo squatting. Okay. So that is, um, what, what is your opinion? What do you think about this? I want to know your opinion. Is there anything you think I, I left out? Please feel free to comment. Please hit the notification bell. Please hit the subscribe button. I love you. Stay safe. See you on the next video.